Welcome to this recorded lecture about peripheral vascular investigations. I'm Dr. Ali Sabur, Professor of Vascular Surgery, Enchamps University. This presentation should be watched before you attend your face-to-face -face interactive session. This presentation is an introduction and a preparation for the face-to-face -face session. By the end of this presentation, you will be able to <coughs> Identify the different investigations that are used to visualize the arteries and veins and explain the potentials and the scope of each of these investigations. Please be ready, be ready to build upon this knowledge to explain why some investigations are used for screening while others are used for decision making before any operative intervention. If you suspect that your patient is having a lesion along the arterial tree causing occlusion or stenosis, vascular imaging can give you more information about the site, the extent, and the nature of the lesion. Doppler ultrasound used to detect blood flow within the vessel, the, sh the one shown in the picture, is considered a bedside procedure and not an investigation. The pocket Doppler can be used to measure the ankle pressure and calculate the ankle brachial index as you will learn later. The ankle brachial index is normally above one. This is because the pressure within the lower limb arteries is normally higher than the pressure in the upper limb arteries. An index of 0.5 is found in limbs with critical ischemia. You will learn more about critical ischemia when we discuss chronic ischemia. In diabetic patients, the Toe brachial index is a more accurate indicator of ischemia than the ankle brachial index. The explanation of this finding will be discussed in the face to face session. The absolute ankle or toe pressure is now used as an indicator for critical ischemia. In your decision, in your clinical session, we will demonstrate how to use the pocket Doppler. Then each student will learn how to use it to detect the arterial flow. Commonly used imaging investigations to visualize the arterial tree include duplex ultrasonography, digital subtraction angiography, CT angiography and magnetic resonance angiography. This is the arterial duplex. Arterial duplex is a non invasive imaging modality that can, in its ultrasound mode, this is the ultrasound mode, it can, in its ultrasound mode visualize the arterial lumen then in its Doppler mode in its Doppler mode it can show the flow within the selected artery in the face-to-face -face session the normal arterial waveform shown in the picture will be simply explained, as well as the significance of the colors seen within the flow of blood in the lumen. Angiography, or more accurately, arteriography, is an invasive investigation that entails injection of contrast material to visualize the arterial tree. 
and geography is not a screening investigation and is ordered only if you are planning for an intervention. We'll discuss more details within the face-to-face -face session. And geography can be show the nature and the extent of the lesion and the extent of arterial wall disease and the runoff arteries. Picture A shows an angiogram of a normal aortoiliac bifurcation. You can notice the smooth outline of the arteries. Picture B shows a diseased aortic bifurcation with occlusion of the left common iliac artery. In your clinical session, you will see several more examples of angiograms for patients with chronic lower limb ischemia, and you will understand the meaning of a distal runoff artery and its significance in the management decision making. Examples of the value of angiography in imaging the upper limb arteries, the visceral arteries, and the carotid arteries will be briefly discussed in your face-to-face -face session. Imaging of arterial aneurysms. If you suspect that an artery is aneurysmal, that is, pathological dilatation of an artery, you can confirm your clinical suspicion by abdominal ultrasound examination. Abdominal ultrasound can measure the arterial diameter. This non-invasive method is used for patients screening. Measuring the precise aneurysmal diameter and its extent is important before any operative intervention. Spiral CT is used for these accurate measurements. Now to the investigations of the venous tree. Normally, the veins function to drain the lower limbs. Normal veins should be patent with functioning valves to allow blood flow in one direction only. Venous imaging can help in patients' diagnosis and decision-making by documenting venous obstruction if you are suspecting deep venous thrombosis, chronic venous obstruction, or documenting venous reflux, that's, that is the reverse flow of blood against the, norm, the normal flow. You can see here that this is the normal venous wave and here is the refluxing veins against the direction of flow that is a reverse flow that is sustained and maintained for a long time. This is visualized within the, uh, uh, the venous duplex and you can trace these uh, uh, graphs and document that there is venous reflux beside the, the voice or the sound of venous reflux. We'll demonstrate how is this happening and how to uh, use your pocket Doppler uh, to detect venous reflux in your face-to-face -face sessions. In special situations, namely the examination of the inferior vena cava and the intrathoracic veins, duplex images are not accurate. CT and geography can help in these situations. Please be ready with your questions, if you have any, at the beginning of your next face-to-face -face session. Thank you.